California may have a reputation as a sun-kissed paradise with some of the world's most photographed real estate, with sparkling white beaches and the celebrated rocky coastline, but the reality is that the nation's most populous state has the worst air quality in the nation, according to annual reports issued by the American Lung Association. More than half of America's dirtiest cities are in California, and rates of illness there are rising. As the planet gets hotter, carbon levels continue to climb and air quality progressively worsens. To cite one example, the heat trapping carbon dioxide emitted from tailpipes and factories collects over cities, creating CO2 domes that shroud the urban cores in toxic clouds of pollutants. Research on air quality in New York, Phoenix, and Baltimore shows that ambient CO2 parts per million levels can spike into the 400s, 500s, and 600s which climate modelers predict will become the norm in 20 to 30 years. Right now, the global average is 393 parts per million. The same chemical reaction that makes more ozone and goes faster when temperatures are higher also produces chemical compounds that make particles, or particulate matter, in the air. Pay close attention to the six most common pollutants we describe, their effects, and acid rain, as there will be a quiz at the end. How are you? I'm good. On my way here, I had like a really hard time breathing. It must have been just your head. You're like imagining things. Are you sure? No, I'm really sure. And I was like walking up the hill, kind of out of breath. Oh my God, it must have been the air pollution. Air pollution? Do you know what air pollution is? No. It's a mixture of solid particles and gases in the air. That sounds really bad. You think? Yeah, I think I've heard about that. There are six common pollutants, mm -hmm. like carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. There is nitrogen dioxide. Particulate matter. Lead. Sulfur dioxide. Um, ground level ozone. We should learn a little bit more about this. Yeah, let's go. So carbon monoxide, where does it come from and how does it affect us? Carbon monoxide comes from the fuel combustion of vehicles and engines, which obviously most of us use every day. And what does it do? It reduces the amount of oxygen reaching the body's organs and tissues. That's not good. And it aggravates heart disease, which results in chest pain. So nitrogen dioxide, where does it come from? And how does it affect us? It comes from the fuel combustion of things like electric utilities, big industrial boilers and vehicles and wood burning. What does it do to us? So it worsens lung disease leading to respiratory symptoms and it causes increased exposure to respiratory infection. So sulfur dioxide, where does it come from and what does it do? Sulfur dioxide comes from fuel combustion, especially high sulfur coal and from things like electrical utilities and industrial processes as well as natural occurrences like volcanoes. And what does it do? It aggravates asthma and makes breathing extremely difficult and it also contributes to particle formation with associated health effects. Ground level ozone is a secondary pollutant formed by chemical reaction of volatile organic compounds. 
and nitrogen oxides in the presence of sunlight. It decreases lung functions and causes respiratory symptoms such as coughing, shortness of breath, asthma, and it also makes lung diseases get worse. Lead is produced by metal industries, also by waste incinerators and battery manufacturing. It damages the developing nervous system, resulting in IQ loss and impacts learning, memory, and behavior in children. Particulate matter is formed through chemical reactions, fuel combustions, like burning coal, wood, and diesel. It's also formed through farming via plowing and field burning. And it also is formed during construction of roads. Short-term exposures can worsen heart or lung diseases and causes respiratory problems. Long-term exposures can cause heart or lung disease and sometimes premature death. So acid rain refers to a mixture of deposited material, both wet and dry, um, containing more than the normal amounts of nitric and sulfuric acid, uh, which comes from cars and the industrial processes. However, naturally, rain is acidic solution with a pH level of 5.3 to 6 because of the presence of some pollutants in the air. When the pH level of rainwater falls below this range, it becomes acid rain. dry ice to produce hydrocarbonic acid, uh, which is basically an imitation of acid rain. Now we are going to measure the pH level of a distilled water and compare it to the pH level of the acid rain. Both natural and man-made sources are known to play a role in the formation of acid rain but it's mainly caused by the combustion of fuels which results in the emission of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. Natural sources such as erupting volcanoes, rotting vegetation, and sea sprays produce sulfur dioxide and fires. Bacterial decomposition and lightning generate nitrogen dioxide. The chemicals released by natural sources gets mixed up with the water and oxygen and are dispersed over large areas because of wind patterns, which results also in acid rain. In this video, we talked about air pollution, which occurs when the air contains harmful amounts of gases, um, dust, and smoke. Uh, we also talked about the six main air pollutants, which are carbon monoxide, lead, uh, ground level ozone, nitrogen dioxide, um, particulate matter, and sulfur dioxide. One of the main outcomes of air pollution is acid rain. Acid rain usually occurs when the normal water rain contains more than the usual amounts of nitric acid and sulfuric acid, which causes the rain to become more acidic, um, also more hazardous. And finally, we discussed the cause and effects of acid rain and how it has a negative impact on the environment. What water? <laughs> gonna go down and wait. We'll wait to see what is over. <laughs> if that ride was worth the pain, that along with the expectations. And lastly, we'll lay it. <laughs>